Welcome to the Laurent Collective Podcast, where we go deeper than just surface talk. Each week, we'll explore everything from family, business, creativity, culture, and faith. To make sure not to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and hop on to Instagram at Laurent Collective to chat with us about this episode. Hello, hello. Hello, hey guys. We today, um, we were just having a bit of a chat and um, mm. there is kind of, I don't know, a thought process that like failing is not a good thing, that you shouldn't fail and um, we wanted to share a story that I don't think we've shared here before about um, starting a nonprofit. Yeah. I think we've, I think we've mentioned we've hinted it. hinted at it maybe. Was, yeah, I think we've mentioned it a couple times, but I think we had also thought like doing a a, a, a episode on it would be really fun yes so we started a nonprofit um or a charity depending where you're listening what but both same thing <laughs> um and it uh it, we had to close it it didn't go as we had dreamed and thought that it would mm. um and so but we so in in the world's eyes it failed right right um, well yeah definitely and it so we thought we would just yeah we thought we would share that story and that experience of what that looked like and what we learned from it, just in case you, um, I don't know, maybe you're stepping out of something that didn't go how you thought it was going to go, or um, I, I actually don't like the word fail um, because like it's a learning experience. I don't right. think it's a failure yeah, yeah. because you learn something from it, and that might sound overly cheesy and like positive spin on it, but but I mean it as, really is as, true. You know, being a human. And something not working out the way you were hoping to, that that definitely feels like failure. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you just yeah. does, and so. that's just, that happens all the time. It's yeah. not, uh, yeah, it's not a one-off, you know, kind of thing. So, um, so a little bit of the backstory is yeah. that um, we just, yeah, we really had on, I mean, both of us in different shapes and forms, obviously, um, experienced different things in our high school or secondary years. Um, and we, at the time, noticed there was tons of stuff after school for athletes, for those involved with like drama or music or theater, um, those kind of things. Everything was funneling towards those things where there mm-hmm. was tons of after school activities. But if you were somebody who was just interested in art, Mm-hmm. Um, who like to create art and that kind of thing. Most schools Most, did not offer something for that community. Yeah, exactly. Like it was more of focused on the visual arts um, in, in that sense. And so a lot of the, yeah, a lot of schools and stuff around us at that time where we were living just didn't have a lot of stuff that was outside of school, if that makes any sense. Yes, there was stuff during school, yeah, but maybe they couldn't explore it further. Yeah, exactly. The, you know, those kids that, you know, really felt some tug towards the visual arts like they just didn't have extra space extra spaces or places to go um that they could really explore it even more if that makes any sense so yeah so we started talking to some people and teachers and um the community we lived in and everything like that and they were like yeah like they do need some place to go. Um, a lot of those kids, you know, this isn't to put a blanket statement on, but a lot of the, a lot of the teachers said like a lot of these kids are really struggling and they don't know where they fit and that kind of thing. And mm. we thought, well, let's do well, the idea behind it was twofold. Like let's create a space that is a safe place that is open after school that people can come and create. And we provide the space um, mm-hmm. for community and creating um and then the second part was to show them like uh that they can actually do this as a career because there's a lot of people that at that age like they really into creating and art and everything but then other and other worldly influences are saying like it could be their parents it could be you know just their thought process of like well you can't do that as a career Mm -hmm. um and so we wanted to show them the ways that like look these are the steps you can take and this is how you sell art those like teaching the business yeah i think i think initially too we were even thinking about how could we bring in people from these certain industries that some of these students might be interested in how could we bring them into those into that space to not necessarily like mentor and like just share their knowledge with them and actually show the possibility of this skill, this talent that they have that they're starting to find this passion in, in high school or at secondary school or whatever it was like, um, how could we, 
continue to fuel that fire? Like, how could we create a space? I think, again, for me, growing up, a lot of times I would, I, a lot of it stewed from, from my heart and what I experienced. You know, I had friends that were in, into art and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, like, outside of the classroom, we didn't create together. We didn't do much together. And so then when I went to university and studied art, um, I, you know, we had studio time, we had all this extra time that we could be together with, um, like-minded people and, and people that were creating. And when you're, when you're together with those people, there was something unique that happened. And, and so for me, remembering how that felt in high school and then going to university and seeing how the possibilities of that, I wanted to create a space that some of those high school students could relate and and start to kind of get that feeling um, but then also pull in that side of the business side of things to show them to introduce them to people to to um you know help them understand the possibilities going further and in, in, into university or not or whatever it is like how can they take their talent and their passion and this gift that they have and and use it in, a, in an amazing way and so um that was like really the heart behind it is mm-hmm. just we really wanted to create a safe place for kids to come and explore and, and to understand the passions that they have with around the visual arts and, and creating and, um, and also have others around them that they, that can be, um, that they can inspire one another to, to push on and push forward into what they're doing and, and how they're creating. And so, yeah, that was kind of the, where it all birthed and where it all started. And, um, Yeah. Was, so we, crazy. we, um, yeah, we just did a lot of research. We figured out some things. We figured out like, okay, how much would it be to run a space like this? Um, we lived in the suburbs and like rentals. I mean, gosh, when I think about what we paid for rent for oh that space <laughs> compared to what we would pay in London. Yeah. Oh, um, and so we did find, we looked around at some different spaces and stuff um, that we tried to be really close to one of the high schools that we were near. So it was kind of, it was, I mean, yeah, it was in walking distance. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we found a space and we were able to rent it. Um, and it was twofold. It was for um, that space, for the blank space. But then we also, um, we still had our business. Um, I had my photography business. And so I had like my client meetings and things like that there. Um, and that it, um, yeah, that that was then a place that, you know, kind of had that as well as there was somebody else that shared the space with us and they rented out a portion of the building too. Um, and so that helped cover some of the cost of it. Um, and that, I remember those like beginning when we first started things first, it was like prepping the building. And so it was like, it was painting, um, you know, like we, somebody knew somebody that like had all these random Starbucks chairs and tables. And so Mm -hmm. like we were able immediately to not have to buy furniture and just, it was this really, you know, we had, um, it was a really amazing opportunity. Like, the, the how we saw our community around us at that time like step into this vision with us um and and creating this space for for students and and it was just yeah like when i said we had you know random people saying hey we've got these chairs from starbucks do you want them you know hey i know somebody here at this paint shop and they're totally willing to donate a bunch of paint to you to do your paint the walls um I think we had we had somebody donate somebody, tile yeah, for the restaurant. Yeah, we had rooms. somebody that like knew somebody that you know f- would do the <clears throat> the bathrooms at different fast food restaurants in the states, and they had a bunch of like tile sitting around, and they donated the tile for the bathrooms. And so there was just lots of things that like it was just really really cool. It was really fun, and we had people come and help us do the painting. We had people help us like just clean stuff up and just get things organized and ready. So that this could be a, a really fun space for, for kids to to really be inspired in. And it was just really, really fun. Yeah. So it, we created this space and then, you know, we went into the high schools and talked to our teachers and stuff. And um, we started having kids come. Um, yeah. So they were showing up after school. Um, it was particularly from one high school in general, but like we occasionally had kids from other high schools. Um, Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it, it ended up being, now there was like several of the kids that were definitely into art and creating and Pat was mainly the one that was there and would just have, you know, like 
stuff out and like just chat with them and things like that. But then they started bringing a couple of their friends yep. um, too that also just didn't have a safe place to, you to know, go. be after school yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, and so we called it the blank space. I guess we never really yeah, said that. Yeah, we didn't them. say that. No. Yeah, it's called the blank space. Um, it was yeah. called the blank space. And the idea was like, it's a blank space that like is filled with like people creating and that kind of thing. Um, and, and in some ways, I think initially we thought about, you know, the blank canvas and like, there's so many possibilities and so many opportunities with a blank canvas. You know, that's the same thing that we wanted to create with the space is there's so many opportunities. There's so many possibilities that you could come to this space and create and do and be inspired by. Um, but little did we know, like, yes, we were starting to get some of these creative um, high school students or in and, and that was starting to grow, but also they were bringing their friends that might not necessarily have been into the visual arts or create creativity, but they just, they just wanted to hang out. They just wanted to be in a space with, people that they could just hang out with and talk with and so actually that's what that's what happened at least in that portion of the blank space so at the after school sessions of the blank space that actually was what happened it it actually more became a place a safe place for for kids to come after school and just to hang out and Mm -hmm. feel like they belong somewhere and that they could just sit and chat and some did homework but most of the time we just kind of sat around and talked and some of their friends were creating and some weren't and things like that so it was just like a really just simple space it was um but it was also just a um yeah it was just a really fun space for them to be in so yeah and then it also had another aspect too that we wanted to <clears throat> show have have these high school students a chance to showcase their artwork um mm-hmm. yeah. and so we had basically um we had again met with our teachers and stuff like that and they communicated it to students and so students submitted their artwork then um mm-hmm. into having a gallery show that we wanted to yeah. say like look you can be part of this thing mm-hmm. um and i think we had 13 different high schools somewhere 12 or mm, so i think it was like seven. Oh, i thought it was more than that no that we reached out to oh that we reached sorry. out sorry yeah, yeah, yeah i should have said what i was talking about so. in numbers we had like 13 or 12 yeah. um high schools that we reached out to and then we had about seven high schools say like have kids then submit yeah, yeah um which we were like well for our first year that's pretty you know good and that kind of thing yeah i think for for the first year we had it was like i think we ended up having about 25 to 30 students yeah that were part of it that were part of the show um and then we we held it at a local well for the first one we held it the blank space yeah um, the first one was blank and i think we had about 100 people show up um and we did tell um at that point we were just the whole point was to show like this is what a gallery how you would prep your artwork for a gallery show mm-hmm. and these are the kind of things that you would do and that kind of stuff and um and then for them to see the excitement of like sharing their artwork because many yeah. of the high school students wouldn't really have a chance to like maybe it would you maybe know. it would have been like at the school yeah or exactly like that. but the mm-hmm. idea of of submitting your artwork to something outside of school that you're sharing it with the potential of other people in the community seeing it rather than just like maybe fellow students or like other you know faculties and teachers and things like mm-hmm. that so um, yeah so we did that and that was really successful i think there was 100 people that showed up to the first one and then mm-hmm. when we did it the second year um it was it like tripled the amount of well, people yeah, that it, showed up i think up. we ended up we ended up doing it at a different location than mm-hmm. the blank space the next year was that right I yes think that's right. yeah yeah um yeah because we had we had gotten to know one of the the owners of a local coffee shop i think at that time and so we pitched the idea of actually having the show there and i think we doubled in size as far as the amount of pieces of artwork that we had as well as i think we it was close to 300 people yeah it was a lot of people that showed i think she sold out show. of everything at the coffee shop um, <laughs> everything. and like yeah it was so it was just there was such an energy around the shows that was happening and just just to see the students that were again a part of the shows that they were putting their artwork in and then them being able to bring their family and their friends and and to see how like i don't know like just proud of the work that they had done to also see others like oh my gosh like that's just such a really cool piece or whatever and then they were able to be there to talk about like you know what they did why they did it and that kind of thing so it was just like it just really started to 
create some really awesome momentum. I think a couple of the kids sold artwork too that people said, can I buy I think, that? I think and we, I think that I think... we were able to like help that happen as yeah, well, yeah. which then was a whole nother, especially for their parents then to mm-hmm. see like, oh, you know. Yeah. Um, so meanwhile, all this is going on and things are pointing in this direction of like this thing that we, yeah, that, starting to build like momentum. this idea is building momentum and stuff like that. And then in the United States, um, then they have uh, for, to get your like nonprofit status. So basically mm-hmm. the reason or, or a charity status, the reason you would do that is because then people can donate to you even when they donate things like supplies mm-hmm. or things like that or um, money donations and that kind of thing, then they get a tax write off. And so like if people wanted to make a large donation, that is something that they, you know, would want to take into account. And so we had several people saying, oh yeah, like we'll donate as soon as you get that um, nonprofit status. And we had filled all the paperwork and like gone through all the legal stuff and everything like that for it and turned in our paperwork. And then we didn't hear any, I mean, it said it was supposed to be like a two month process or something. Mm -hmm. And we heard nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I started calling like crazy and being like, what is going on? Can we check on the status? And our, this is just crazy how this all happened. Our paperwork got sent into an office that actually got shut down because there was some kind of something happening there, something shady happening Mm -hmm. there. And so the office was shut down for several months while things were cleaned up and then our paperwork was there. And so then that meant that... You know, there was nothing we could do. I remember calling at one point and being like, can I send you a pizza to find our paperwork? Like, I was like, what can I do to, you know, (laughs) help this matter? Because we really would like this. We literally had people waiting to give a certain amount of money in order for that to happen. Um, And there was nothing we could do. It was totally out of our hands. Mm -hmm. Um, So here we had had these two gallery shows. We had these students showing up, um, that kind of thing. But we were putting all of our own money into this. Um, We did have a couple people that said like, oh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll still give. But then other people were like, well, you just let us know as soon as you get that status. Yeah. Um, and we got to the point, I think it was like literally at that point had been a ye- over a year and they still hadn't given us, um, information on, on, on the status of whether we've gotten it or not just saying, we're so sorry, everything is caught up in this, in this mm-hmm. particular office. There's no way we can shift it to another office, that kind of thing. Um, and so we continue to do what we were doing and gosh, do we have that? for two it was two years in i think it was about two years i think and we finally had again these it was so difficult because these people you know wanted to donate stuff and it just was a hold up Mm -hmm. and so two years in we financially we had put so much of our own money and taken so much money out of savings that we couldn't i mean we had no means to do it anymore and so we had to make the really really hard decision to stop um, we didn't have the nonprofit status. Yep. We are basically told by the office that was looking at it, like, if you don't have it yet, it's most likely a no. Um, we're sorry, like, that it's taken so long. It shouldn't have taken that long, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, and so after two years of this thing that felt like it was, like, headed in the right direction. Yeah, with, you know, with how it started with this, you know, people, you know, donating their time and resources and all that stuff like things were just falling into place and then when we started them doing actually the stuff like things we were, were things were just really we were going into to high happen. schools and speaking yeah. about how you could do the things as a career yeah. art as a career it just was and really stuff. really cool there were things that were actually starting to gain momentum with it mm-hmm. but and, like financially we were and financially it just it, it, it it wasn't that part wasn't working yeah. um and i remember i was pregnant with veda when we had made the decision we were going to have to close it down um and there's uh and then we had her because there's a picture of when we um left the blank space um and we had moved everything out and veda's in her car seat um and the yeah. kids are because we had a final like when we first got the space we brought mm-hmm. jude and zane in and we like had pizza and stuff like that to celebrate and then when we were done there's a picture of um with veda in her car in her car seat and she's a tiny little thing um and we're having pizza with the kids again to celebrate like 
it's closure, but we're also going to celebrate this because still great things happen during Mm -hmm. this. Um, And I mean, I think it took us a while. I remember having a moment like a couple days later and like sitting at my computer at home and be like, I just want to be there and I can't believe this happened and that kind of thing. Um, And just having a real like just (laughs) crying fest from it because it just felt like, oh, I don't understand this. I don't Mm -hmm. understand why everything was going so well but like financially because of not getting the non profit status and things like that it just wasn't happening mm-hmm. um and then literally was it three weeks after we had closed and moved out of the space it was somewhere around there wasn't it, it? yeah i mean it was really it was really it's very close, close to after that really happened close. we um and this is after i had spoken to somebody before we decided we were going to move out of the space i had spoken to somebody one last time who said i'm so sorry i just i don't know where your paperwork is like yeah. it could be another year or two before you hear from us um, and I checked our mail and there was a letter in there that was declaring that we had successfully gotten our nonprofit status. <laughs> um, this is after we had moved out of the space. They had already rented it out to somebody else, like all these things. And we were like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. Um, and so we were then faced with the decision of like, well, do we try and do this again? Do we try and just run out of our home? What do we try to do? Um, and we just really felt like, no, like this is, this, it, it this just is needs just to be it done. just needs to be done yeah. um and that was yeah that was a really hard pill to swallow of like i i do not we did not understand it whatsoever mm-hmm. um and i still looking back i'm like i do not understand yeah, the timing of all that talking about it again it's like oh my gosh <clears throat> yeah i don't understand it at all um but You know, and so if you're looking at all of that, like there was success, but then technically, if you want to use the word fail, it failed failed because we had to close it. We couldn't continue on. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it was gut wrenching when our teachers would reach out to us and be like, when's your next gallery show? I have some kids of mine. And we were like, we can't like Mm -hmm. because that costs money too to rent spaces out and things like that. Um, And so looking back i can see so much that we've learned in it but that is so hard when you're in it mm-hmm. um and you're just feeling like the deep sadness the deep like um you know so many things come in when something has supposedly failed and is hasn't gone how it was supposed to that you like tell yourself or others might say to you or things like that and it's so hard um and so i think it's just something that we don't talk about enough when something even if something's slightly successful and then it still doesn't go well right something has to end for a reason um i think we just yeah we don't talk about it enough no <clears throat> and I you mean, learn I think, so much yeah i mean i think as we're sitting here talking about it it's just it was it's such a reminder uh for me of just the processes that we went through the the ups and downs of like how, what did that take to even get that thing off the ground what did you know some of the day-to-day things look like and thinking about all that kind of stuff with the blank space and looking now at like the business that we're running and other things like that like there's so much that we can now look back on during that time and going ah that's why we don't do this anymore or that's why you know, we've actually, because of that, we learned how to do this in this business. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all, like you said earlier, it's, it was such a learning process, but when you're in that moment and when you have to close the doors and you have to do all that kind of stuff, it just is so gut wrenching. Um, and it's so hard and it's so like, it's just, it feels like you've just been defeated in so many different ways. Um, and, or, and you've let kids down. Like, I remember like, gosh, like, again, like you said, like we'd had teachers calling us or, or we used to, we would, we would have kids show up as we were like, you know, closing things up and moving things out of the space. And like, it's just, it was so difficult in that moment, um, to do that. But I think looking at our journey up to now, I can't imagine us not going through that. I can't imagine us not, um, you know, going for it and doing all those things with it and meeting the people that we did through it and all that kind of stuff and the relationships that we built. But, um, and then it failing, like I still can't, I can't imagine that part of our, like if you take that part out of our journey, I don't think we're where we're at today. No, and so I don't I think, think we'd be living biggest, in London or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. And so I think it's just, <clears throat> it's interesting to think about that. Like you said though, it's, 
it's you don't like to use the word failure it's like a learning process and i think i think often it was times a, we, a learning time yeah i, I think <laughs> often often we often get stuck in the failure and not seeing it as that learning opportunity and 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 understanding the things that we need to change about ourselves or how we've grown and through that that process and all that kind of stuff that um that helps us into that next step even though it might be really difficult to get to that next step because of this letdown or this disappointment or quote unquote failure. Like, um, I think again, it's just, it's yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm thankful that we had that opportunity. I'm really thankful that we had what happened in some ways. Um, because again, we grew so much in that short amount of time that has led us to where we're at. Um, and, and it's, it's, and it's easy. It's really easy to say, say that after. Now, I was just going to say point. that it's so, so easy if you are in that right now, yeah. or if you are in the place where, you know, you're on the other side, right on the other side of something having just ended that wasn't successful in your eyes, mm. or you're in the middle of having to make a hard decision to close something down like we did or whatever that may be. Um, uh, it, that you can't see that right now yeah. <laughs> in that moment there was no way that it'd be like well i'm sure i'm gonna learn something about this and i'm gonna learn from this and things like that i mean uh, we just knew in our hearts like it's done and then when we got that letter that we did have the nonprofit status <laughs> we still were like no i think it's done like mm -hmm. this is done um and you know again like you said we're years and years and years mm -hmm. from that now i mean veda is seven now and so and she was a baby then and so that tells you anything of like, now I can look back on it. It seems so distant and those feelings seem so distant. I do remember them very, very vividly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, wow, like that taught us so much. We learned so much during that time. We lost, we learned so much about being resilient mm. and trusting and all of those kinds of things are going after something that we really truly believed in that again, like we would not be living in London if it were not having gone through that. Um, yeah. And so I, I think there's two things that we hope you take away from it. Like number one, like I, I think unfortunately we see so much in this world that we live in right now of like overnight success or success. And mm, this is, look yeah. at this person, everything they do is always successful. Well, rarely do those people talk about the fact that like for those things, I think Bear Grylls actually just posted something the other day about how many TV shows he's had that like the networks have been canceled before the TV mm. shows even um like gone through and that now he's at a point where so there's all those failures i, I can't remember how many it was like 14 or 20 or something that have been wow. canceled um and now he has what three or four shows that are on things that are reaching like 1.9 billion people i think he said and i'm like yeah. thank you for showing that you have had you know yeah, failures yeah. before you got to the point that you are now because no one in general talks about that stuff to mm -hmm. say look i tried this thing especially in the moment like we did share in the moment like we've had to close this thing down mm -hmm. and this is how we're feeling and we're devastated and we don't understand it um and i'm glad we did share in the moment of that um we said we don't have answers because that's what it feels like then mm -hmm. you don't know you don't have answers you don't understand um and so if that is you we feel you we get you yeah, we definitely. we are sending so much love to you because we know what that feels like and it is so cliche to say then like something good will come out of it this will be used for good and somehow of, of, of failing in this way or you know closing something i mean still we still make mistakes in our business and mm -hmm. i then know next time oh i know what not to do now you know yeah. like you learn those kind of things or you have learned new skills or whatever it may be that are you going to take into whatever something is down the road um but yeah it's it's it, so it's okay it should you should be failing if you're not like you're not taking risk that's mm. i mean right like you're not yeah. maybe taking enough risk if you mm -hmm. or putting yourself out there or trying new things if you're not failing at things and mm -hmm. we say this to our kids all the time like you're not gonna get well, it right on the first try yeah and i think it's more about like are you growing mm -hmm. are you are you really growing and learning and learning more about yourself and things you know so I think if we get, I, I know for me, I, you know, sometimes I get so comfortable that then I realize, oh my gosh, I really haven't like done something different or like tried to, you know, up my game in a sense, you know, level myself up in some way that, um, you know, when you go out and just try something new or whatever, uh, it just, yeah, it just helps you become more you, I think in some ways, so the more that you learn about yourself and a situation and take those risks. 
um, whether you again you fail or not, you're growing, like you're growing. And so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we hope, I don't know if this is encouraging or just you maybe are shaking your head going, yeah, I'm there. Like <laughs> yeah. I feel it. Um, we wanted to share, you know, I know we spent a bit of time sharing the actual story and stuff, but I think that's important because mm. like, uh, who knows what's on your heart right now or the things that you feel mm. like you should step into. And and we're not using this story as a like, Ooh, be careful. That's not what we're saying yeah. at all. Like do your research just like we did do yeah. all the things, but like sometimes things like getting held up in an office that we could have never known when we stepped into that, like our paperwork would get caught in some log jam of some controversy that was happening in this nonprofit office. Like mm -hmm. we would have never known that there was no way to fix it. It was out of our control completely. Yep. Um, and that those kind of things happen in the journey too. And sometimes it's our own, we make a mistake and that, right. and it's for us to, you know, and, and that kind of thing, like there are some things looking back, we should have probably done ahead of time to set ourselves up to not like yeah. have us just pouring all of our money in it. And it mm -hmm. did put us into Debt and stuff like that and so there are so many things that now when we make decisions and business decisions and other decisions like mm -hmm. we make sure we have certain things yeah. um and so you know if there's something that you're hardly like oh this is risky like yeah do your research and stuff but like don't be afraid to take the step like that definitely again just because it could possibly fail is not a reason to not take the step like because it guess what it could it possibly could... go amazing too yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> like yeah. every step we take and every decision we make in life and business, whatever it is, um, always has those two options, right? Mm -hmm. And so you have to take a step because you never know what could be and you never know mm -hmm. what you can learn. Or I still believe that that time with the blank space, it did impact people's lives. Yeah. Um, it was mm -hmm. short lived. Yeah. Um, it didn't get to continue for many, many years beyond that. But like, yeah, it doesn't change the fact that, you know, if, if it was that short amount of time, it still did what we wanted it to exactly you know yes. in a lot of ways yeah it, we we did have to close the doors but it still fulfilled its purpose mm -hmm. and, and it might not have been as long as we had thought but it still did yeah so so this is us sending you encouragement mm -hmm. or if you're on the other side of things too like we we see you we know you mm -hmm. um and we would we always end with that saying we would love to hear you guys but we really do mean that <laughs> yeah we would love to hear um, we would about love that. to hear yeah. from you guys <clears throat> on what you have learned about failing or if you're thinking about stepping into something and you're scared we'd love to hear about that too um because it's just being in a community together helps uh, mm -hmm. lift each other up in those things um and saying it's okay like you can keep stepping like mm -hmm. even though we tripped here it's okay like keep going and that kind of thing and so we just hope that you hear that of um whether you're having to close something in some form or another and step into something else um or you're just in the weight of it right now um be encouraged there there is stuff that you will learn out of it um and that failing is normal so yeah <laughs> it's part of life unfortunately yeah. oh wish it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so we hope you guys are encouraged and we will talk to you very soon see ya thanks for joining us on today's episode of the laurent collective podcast if you enjoyed today's podcast be sure to subscribe and leave a review which helps others find our podcast continue the conversation with us over on instagram at laurent collective we look forward to going deeper than just surface talk with you again next week.